So this video, let's quickly make a, a player that when it shines a light on a wall, it will reveal some information. So this is just an empty scene with just low lighting and my player. So I'm gonna quickly open up my player. Um, also note I've imported um, just a very bad quick rough texture. Um, yours would be like text and hopefully better quality. But for demonstration purposes, this should be fine. And I'm going to add a light to my character. So this is going to act as the torch. So I will attach this to his gun, I guess. We'll pretend the gun is um, a torch. Which I suppose we should rotate down if that's the way the gun's facing. Um, also going to increase the intensity of touch. And increase the radius, the distance that it shines. Let's just make sure this actually affects the world. Yeah, we can see the touch. You know what, I'm not going to have it pointing on the ground at the start. We'll just have it pointing upwards. Okay, so now we've loosely got our torch set up. Now we've loosely got our torch set up. Um, what we're also going to need is a collision. So I'm just going to add a component and I'm going to just do, for this we'll just do a box collider. And this box collider is loosely going to be where the torch would be. So hopefully now, wherever the toe should be, this is going to show the like it being hit, like that. That'll do. Um, and on the box, I'm going to scroll down, and I'm going to want two things. I'm going to want a begin overlap, and I'll also want an end overlap. So let's just compile those and move that to the side. We're going to need to speak to whatever we're casting to. So this is why I'm going to create this as a an actor. So I'm just going to right click, create a new actor, and I'll call it wall BP. Now this is going to be super simple for demonstration. You can obviously make yours look nicer and better. Nice and wide, nice and big. And I'm going to just use the same um, start content that I did for the other one, for that scene. And let's drag that into the world. So you can see with this, this is just um, a BSP that I've just hollowed out for the sake of quickly making this. But this wall, you, you'll obviously make your own scene properly. Okay, now we've got this. What we're going to want to do is say, when we begin overlap with our wall BP, let's just do a print string to make sure it works. So we can see it's working. The light's very faint now. But we can see that it says hello anyway when we shine the light on it. Um, I'm just going to point light in here and turn this down a touch. And let me just quickly look at the light in here. It's some max intensity. It is in max intensity. Uh, 
I don't know what that one's seems to be controlling. What is source like this? Um, I don't know. You can experiment with that and try and find out what works. So now we've got this and we cast into our wall. We don't need you anymore. Let's go to our wall. And what we're going to want to do is create a custom event. So right click and type in custom event. And let's give this a name. Um, shine. We'll call it shine. And in our third person character, we are going to call shine. So when we overlap, we're going to call shine. Now, what shine will do, I think it's because they didn't compile it first here. There we go. Um, what shine will do is it's going to set scalar parameter. Set scalar parameter on our material. And our material right now doesn't have a scalar parameter, so let's create one. So I'm just going to click on my cube, and I'm just using this pre-made material and this is very complex because it's one of the pre-made ones um, don't worry too much about that for now you might literally just have a break and go into the Unreal's pre-made ones are quite complicated if you've not looked at them before so in this I'm going to drag in my texture so this like I say is just um, whatever your text will be and then because it's got an alpha behind it I'm just going to multiply these together and then I'm going to add this to my basic and that's going to go in here like that oops wrong one um, we're also going to need a lerp so I'm just going to hold L and left click or you can just type in lerp linear interpolate and what this is going to do is if the light is not being shined it's going to be this which is just what it was before you know that's just our basic wall H however if the light is being shone shone shined shone on it then we will do this version of it and from here we're going to need a scalar parameter you can either hold s and left click or right click and type in scalar parameter um, and what we'll do is we'll just call it light so light has a default value of zero. However, if we set it to one, that default value of zero will start doing this version, B. So you could, in fact, have it fade in if you wanted to slowly bring up the, the glow or something. Um, also, like if you do want your text to glow, you can send that into there but we're not going to worry about that for now into your missive um did we save that let's save that cool now that's saved um we are going to go back to our wall so when we shine hits we're going to say light which is the scale parameter that we've set and we'll set it to one um and we will save that and now hopefully we can see the wall here when we walk over to it and a light shines on it, the 13 appears. Now, if we want it to turn off when the light's not shining on it, we'll need pretty much just to do the same thing again. So we'll just need a custom event. Um, shine off. And I'm just going to just duplicate that. So highlight it and control W to duplicate use the same target because it's both the same target and set it back to zero go back to a third person character and pretty much same thing cast to wall BP and then tell the wall BP to do shine off now let's say for example you wanted to do it if the wall was um, if you press the button, so like you were only shining your touch during a light press. And have I got something like this pre-built in? Where's my shoot mechanic? Um, I'm sure I've got a shoot mechanic in here somewhere. Impact action shoot, there it is. 
So I've got this one here. So when shoot is pressed, that would be the same for your game, whatever input you got set up. So we just go to project settings. And then we'll go to input and you can just create one if you've not already got one. Call it light on and I'll just do it on left mouse press. Left mouse button, like on, even though I've already got shoot, should be fine. Um, so whereas a light situation, what we'll do is we'll do right click and we'll get input light on. When it's pressed, we're going to create a boolean. So let's just go to variables, create a new bool. We'll call it light on, which by default is false. But if we press it, get, oops, sorry, we want set. So we'll say when the button is pressed, light will be on. When it's released, light will be off. And before we call these, we'll just ask the question. So we'll use an if statement. So left click and hold and press B. While holding B, sorry, left click or right click and just you know, type in if or branch. Um, do we want to end that one? I'm not sure. So we'll ask the question, get, in fact, no, I don't think we need to use it on that one. So we'll ask the question, if light is true, do this. Otherwise, if we're not pressing the light button, don't do it. Let's give it a test and make sure it's all working. So we'll go to our wall. Notice the light shining on it, but we're not actually seeing anything. However, if we left click, it goes. Um, but we'd need to only do it when help holding. So what we'll do as well. Okay we'll need a, another system. So what I'm going to do is once we've, um, I'm just going to create another variable called wall cast. I'm going to change its type to wall BP. And I'm going to take this again. And we're going to get that variable we just created, get it, and do this. So now that way, when we release it as well, it should turn off without us having to walk away. So walk over to it, left click, it's on. Hold left click, it's on. If we release left click, it should be off. We seem to have got to press it a second time. Why is that not working consistently? Oh, because we've got an error here. Wallcast is already wall BP. Interesting. Okay. Um, let's get all axis of class. No, that won't really work, will it? Unless we, that's not going to work unless we knew the ID. Which is easy for me because I've only got one. So I just say get. Holding it, let go, it's off. Holding it, let go off. Holding it, let go off. Holding it, let go off. Um, can we just do that without this? I think we can. All right, I think that should do it. 
So holding it, let go, off. Holding light on, let go, off. Cool, there we go. Um, now if, for example, you feel like the texture's too big on there, it's just because if we look at you know, this whole box, um, what image size is this? It's quite small anyway. Um, this is a small image that's been displayed big. But if, for example, just get yourself, go to like Photoshop, get a 1024 by 1024 image, or get a copy of your UVs even better, um, if you know the UV layout of the wall, and just you know manually sort of put it in place. So if, instead of this being all up here, if for example it was just down here, then it'd be fine, you know? So just, instead of having this, your text take up the whole screen, just have it take up a little bit. Ideally, like I say, if you've got a copy of your UV layout, you'll be able to place it more accurately, but because I'm just using the um, start content template, it's just, basically it's just trying to match it and go for like the same size that that is. And I think that's pretty much all there is to it, really. Um, yeah, cool. I think that should do it. All right. Thanks for watching.